Are you sitting tight? I'm about to give you one hell of a ride. <laughs> First of all, I will give you all new eyes. We will certainly prove that all the experts know is wrong and show that transplanting a head onto a new body is visible in man. No less. Many years ago, a young doctor lost one of his best friends to cancer. But this was no ordinary doctor. He was a brilliant American neurosurgeon who believed that perhaps had he been able to transplant the healthy head of his friend, escape by the cancer, on a healthy donor body, he would have saved his life. In 1970, Dr. White carried out the first head body transplantation of monkeys. But the problem was that at the time, he did not have the technology to rejoin a severed spinal cord. And so left the animal paralyzed. Over the past 35 years, researchers from all around the world set out to find a cure for spinal paralysis. Despite high hopes and many promising leads, they all failed. Thus, in the experts' opinion, reconstructing the spinal cord is impossible. And so, is head transplantation. But something has happened. There's a new kid in town, Gemini. I give you the spinal cord fusion protocol, and your lives won't be again the same. According to traditional neurological lore, movements are generated in the brain where both the orchestra, the motor orchestra, and her director lie. From here, impulses are conveyed to the spinal cord through a specialized motor highway, a bundle of one million fibers, all of them necessary for movements to occur. Just like spaghetti. And for movements to occur, you really need all of them. In the spinal cord, the spaghetti come in contact with specialized cells called motor neurons. These are the cells that make you move. If this were the true story, I wouldn't be here. But the story is plenty different. I welcome you to heaven, the head anastomosis venture. And the world will never be the same again. Spinal cord injury has nothing to do with severing a spinal cord the way we will do when we'll detach the head from the body. Spinal cord injury releases 26,000 newtons of force. This is spinal cord injury. It's unrecoverable. This is what happens in Gemini. The very sharp blade that will be used will release less than 10 newtons of force. That banana can be brought back to life, but this can. The second eye opener is that the spinal cord is no slave. The whole motor orchestra 
the whole array of motor programs that make you move is found in the spinal cord. The brain is merely a director, and we all know that an orchestra can still play without a director, albeit perhaps less perfectly, depending on the director. How do we know? Well, if we stimulate electrically with a spinal cord stimulator, the spinal cord below the level of injury, we can make paraplegic patients stand up, move their legs, and take steps. Ah, this is huge. Electricity, just like in the Frankenstein novel. We just need 10, 20 percent. How do we know? Easy. Back in the 50s, neurosurgeons, in their quest to find a cure for Parkinson's disease, severed this bundle of spaghetti, Motor Highway 1, and after an initial paralysis, patients recovered their movements in full. With just 10, 20 percent of all the spaghetti, of all these fibers, spared. The fourth eye opener is that discovered in the first half of the 20th century and then long ignored by the experts lies a second motor highway, a pillar spanning the whole length of the spinal cord a meshwork of closely packed cells joined by short-range fibers. And when you sever the spinal cord, you sever the short-range fibers. But neurons, as they are called, are known to regenerate their extensions. And in Motor Highway 2, the regeneration is over a very short distance. So, it takes a short time for Motor Highway 2 to be re-established, back in business. But, we still have the spinal cord stimulator. And spinal cord stimulation, electrical stimulation, has the power to accelerate the regrowth process of these short-range fibers. If we sever the spaghetti, all of them, but spare the core of the spinal cord. We can get tetraplegic patients to recover the movements over month and in full after about one year. Because Motor Highway 2 takes over the full brunt of supporting the motor traffic between the brain, the director, and the modern neurons. At this point, we need a magic ingredient. A special class of substances called fusogen's sealants. And the best known example of a fusogen, fusogen sealant is polyethylene glycol, PEG. PEG is everywhere. You have it on you especially the females. <laughs> this morning, I was at the beach, getting me sunshine, and PEG is found in sun lotions, right there. Found in skin creams, women apply before they're gonna sleep. It's found in your printers, as a lubricant for the print heads, and believe me, it is an excellent lubricant for medical purposes. And PEG has the uncanny ability to reconstitute damaged biomembranes. And it has been under our and the experts' noses for decades now. The first application dates back to 1986. Fiber, severance, joined together 
the stumps with peg reconstituted. The first application on the spinal cord dates back to 1999. Right now, PEG can rejoin severed peripheral nerves in men without the need for perfect alignment of the fibers. Two months ago, a German group made the point much more clearly. They removed the scar from spinal, spinally injured rats. And the rats went from paralysis to walking again within a few weeks. Heaven, Gemini, is going to work. Heaven was meant to be the solution for intractable neurological disorders, muscular dystrophies, muscle wasting disorders that leave you immobilized in a bed, but with a clear mind. It was meant for tetraplegia and a host of other disorders for which Western medicine has no solution at all. In this case, you would transplant the healthy head detached from the sick body onto a brain-dead donor, just like you see for ordinary garden variety organ transplantation. Instead of donating the heart, the lungs, this donor, who is brain dead, would donate the entire body. But something happened along the way that redirected heaven and widened its scope, and in so doing, changed your lives forever. Three years ago, a Russian billionaire founded the Avatar Initiative with the goal of cybernetic immortality. By 2025, Avatar aims at transplanting a brain onto a cybernetic body. The problem is that if you transplant an aging brain onto whatever you want, the brain remains aged. But heaven upends this gloomy scenario. In heaven, the brain, the head, would be transplanted on a young donor body. Data accrued since the 1950s prove that if you inject blood from a young animal into old animals, you trigger a rejuvenating cascade of the muscles, the heart, and the brain. Imagine a world where life extension becomes the norm. But the problem is that, happily, there is a dearth of suitable donors. But fancy this. If in this century, cloning, currently a highly inefficient procedure, and slow, gets perfected and accelerated. You will all get a new young you, and this new young body, whose head will be removed, and your old head will be reattached because your memories, your personality is in the old one, then you will get a boost another 40 years. Not bad for something that just costs 10 million euros. <laughs> there are also rebates for billionaires. But heaven is much more. As you all know, 
there are many patients who are reanimated after a heart arrest, brought back to life. And several of these report what is called near, a near-death experience. They see tunnels of light. They feel like they are in another world, which is more real than this one. Now, according to materialist science, this is the product of a dying brain that is being revived. Now, I belong to a group of scientists who believe otherwise, who believe that the brain is only a filter, does not generate consciousness. Now, during the transference of the head on the new body, the head will be cooled to 10 degrees Celsius and will be bloodless. It will be as dead as it gets, clinically gone. Now, I expect that upon reawakening, the subjects will report a full near death, full blown near death experience. When this happens, we will have final proof that once you die, once the brain dies, consciousness survives. And again, for 10 million euros. In the end, before we all go truly bananas, including the experts who blasted heaven and now see their funds in jeopardy, we must all remember the words of a great revolutionary, Gandhi. First, they ignore you. Then, they laugh at you. Then, they fight you. Then, you win. Thank you for listening.